What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 11 of our data analysis with Python and Pandas tutorial series. In this part we're going to be talking about rolling statistics and uh, other things that we can do in, in a rolling fashion. So first of all what we should do is first bring up over here, here we go, there will be a link. Uh, again you'll have to go to the text-based tutorials or link to this in that tutorial right at the top. Basically these are all the things that we can do uh, in a rolling manner and really important is this one here but we'll get to that so first of all uh, we can do things like let me just zoom in here I got zoomed in and got lost anyway rolling count rolling sum rolling mean all that kind of stuff we'll check out the rolling mean you can also do rolling minimum what does this mean so with rolling what you do is you take a window of time and then basically in that window of time we can do all of these things so that's rolling sum. So in that window of time, add all the values together. In that window of time, calculate the average of everything and keep moving that way. Uh, max, standard deviation, and so on. And then with rolling apply, you can write your own function that deals with window data and do anything. So if all these don't suit whatever purpose you might have, rolling apply is your guy. That was good. Anyway, um, I'm here all night. Moving this over here, uh, let's go ahead and calculate a rolling mean. So this is also known as a moving average. So uh, we're going to go ahead and um, we can leave this stuff here. Text, instead of Texas one year, this is what we kind of did before. Uh, we're going to redefine Texas one year. And actually, instead of Texas one year, let's call it TX. Uh, TX12MA or something like that. That'll do. So TX12MA, and then I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to do a replace. So Control H, that's a find. We're going to find all TX1 years and just replace it with TX12MA. Replace all. Good to go. Uh, just to check to make sure that went, went correctly. Cool. All right. Let's close this out. Now what we're going to do, instead of resampling here and filling in A, we don't need to do that right now. Um, what we're going to do is do this. We don't need to print that head here. We'll print that after that. Okay, so TX12MA, what we're going to do is not resample. What it's going to be instead is a moving average. So we're going to do pd.rolling underscore mean of this is the data. We're going to do the rolling mean for it. And then we can choose uh, for how much time. So we'll do 12. So that would be 12 data points. It just so happens each data point is a month. So this would be a 12 moving average, otherwise known as a year. So 12 months or a year. So um, that creates a new column, blah, blah, blah. We'll graph it. Here we go. And there you have it. That's a 12-month 12, uh, 12 moving average. Again, we're forfeiting the little squiggles, which actually are highly valuable to us because it shows us every six months, basically, we go through a cycle. Uh, like clockwork. Moving this aside, oh, one thing you will notice, uh, actually, that right here, uh, you start with not a numbers. Why do we have not a numbers there? Uh, the problem is we have 12 moving average. You can't calculate a 12 moving average on data point number five. Just not possible. So a lot of times what I'll do is, especially in the same data set, the other thing you'll notice, let's run that one last time, The it starts a little later. Right, So if we zoom into this point, you'll see that this started after these points. Now, if there's a significant delay there, it becomes really obvious. So instead of 12, we could do uh, 120, so 120 months. That's a lot of months. But then you wind up with something like this, right? That's kind of a problem, right? That looks silly. So this would be a scenario where maybe if you want everything to line up nice and pretty, you could do uh, HPI data dot drop in a, drop in a. Uh, and then we'll, of course, need to do an in place equals true. Save and run that. And then now it's chopped off all the old data and stuff like that. Anyway, so it's a moving average. We're not going to continue dropping an A, and uh, we'll change this back to a 12. Retain the data here. Whoops. So that would be a moving average. Another good one is uh, the standard deviation. So standard deviation is good for a lot of reasons. One, it can help us actually uh, identify problem points and outliers, but it can also help us uh, kind of detect volatility in the market. So 
as things have a greater standard deviation, that means things are moving around a lot more. So that's good good indication of volatility. So uh, what we would do is we can kind of sit all this up here. Uh, and let's create a new column. And this column will be, um, let's just copy this. Copy, paste. Instead of MA, that's STD. Instead of rolling mean, it's a rolling STD. And then uh, everything else can stay the same. We'll, we'll do a 12-month standard deviation. Now, the problem with standard deviation is it's not uh, in the same kind of, for, I'm trying to think of the right word, uh, scale. There it is. It's not the, at the same scale as um, the housing price index. OK, so standard deviation is how much deviation. So it's almost always going to be a small fraction of the original values. So what we need to do is actually graph it on a different graph. We can go ahead and, and see the show that this creates, TX12STD. And let's go ahead and add that into the printing uh, up here as well. So we'll save and run that. And as you can see, this is the original data, and this is the standard deviation down here. Obviously, I mean, you can kind of tell the fluctuations in the standard deviation. Whoops, wrong button. Um, but we would like to see on a greater scale, right? The obvious increase here, decrease here, increase here, and so on. So what could we do? Well, we can close this and we can graph it on a new graph entirely. Again, this isn't totally a Matplotlib tutorial series, but we're, um, so we're going to kind of run through this. This is covered in the more in-depth data visualization series, but uh, you could probably pick it up real quick now. So these are your axes. This is a, okay, so you've got a figure and then you've got subplots on a figure. And a subplot is also your axes, basically. So we're going to create a new axis. Copy, paste. The, the grid now is going to be a two by one. That would be two tall, one wide. So we'll have a graph on top and a graph on bottom. This one will start at zero, zero, totally fine. This one will start at one, zero. And it's also going to share the x axis of axis one. That means we can zoom in to any either of the graphs, and both graphs will zoom in for us nice and neat. And this is now AX2 for axes 2. Then what we're going to do is uh, not plot that there. <laughs> we'll come down here. And what we're going to say is uh, HPI data. We still do want to plot it, just in different, on a different axis. HPI data, TX12MA. That's what we want to plot. Oops. Dot plot. And this one we're going to plot AX equals AX dose. So now, we'll go ahead and uh, run that. Save and run. What did we do? We did MA instead of STD, I guess. We sure did. Why didn't anybody tell me? Let's run that one more time. There we go. OK, so there you have it. And this is you know, now standard deviation. And again, there's, this is why we share the axes, because we can zoom into this point, and both graphs zoom in to that exact uh, point. So. Uh, that's pretty nifty because you know you can see you know here as prices are going up, sure enough the volatility is going up. We we've, we've seen that, and then up here we're really starting to rock it up, and we are picking that up on the uh, standard deviation graph. So that's pretty cool. So we'll close this out. Uh, another pretty nifty one is like rolling correlation stuff like that. So what we could do is this one's a little more tricky, but we'll keep the figure here. Uh, we can plot on the two, I suppose. We'll do, let's delete all the way here. So what we're going to do is we'll run this. We'll just say TX to AK 12 correlation. So this is measuring, we're going to measure the correlation between these guys. That'll be PD.rolling underscore correlation. And we want to apply this to the HPI underscore data of Texas. So again, it's Texas 2A, uh, AK, so which I, if I'm recalling right, it's actually Alaska. So Texas, and then is the first one. And then we'll go HPI underscore data. Oh my gosh, I cannot type AK. And then for 12 periods, OK, so that's going to calculate the correlation. But again, that, these need to be on a separate graph. OK, so Texas and Arkansas can be on the same graph, though. So we could do something like this. We could say HPI underscore data, TX, whoops, 
and tx needs to be caps dot plot ax equals ax1 label will be equal to txhpi and then we'll take this copy come down here paste so texas ak and then over here ak uh, so that's good then we're going to say ax1.legend location 4 and then we'll come down here and then we're going to say tx underscore ak underscore 12 core good dot plot and then we'll say ax equals ax2 label equals and we'll say uh, let's just take this here copy paste so this is a rolling correlation uh, between these two so what would you do with this well as we noted before uh, the the correlation between all states is extremely high we can see that you know the average correlation here is quite high it keeps coming up to this point uh, so at every point we can see that oh, oh my goodness the correlation drops to almost minus one here basically it pretty much hits it uh, so we know based on the you know last 40 years of correlation data that we pulled up. We pulled up that correlation table not long ago. We know that every state basically follows every state. They all follow the same housing market no matter what. So with correlation, if you have correlation in the negatives, that means they're trending in different directions. So what you want is you want to find scenarios where correlation is in the negatives and you're gonna, in the most ideal scenario, you would find a way to short, like in this scenario here, um, Alaska is is all the way down here in the dumps and whereas Texas keeps going up so what you would do to be a completely market neutral strategy is you would short uh, Texas and you would buy Arkansas now there's it's really kind of difficult to short let's say the Alaska housing market so at the very least what you would do is you would buy Alaska I'm not sure if I keep saying Arkansas or not but if I say Arkansas AK is Alaska anyway uh, so, really what you would do is, you know, in reality, you would just buy Alaska every time it dips. And sure enough, every time, like if you bought Alaska here, you bought Alaska here, good for you. You buy Alaska here, that means you bought it here, and you probably did okay, it goes up slightly. But then you would get out of it once it returns back to the, the typical one. Then again, you would buy Alaska here you'd probably continue held, holding it through here, which is fine. And then basically by this point, you've sold. Again, good for you. You just like doubled your money or more than double your money. And then basically no other time did it drop down to you know that one. But that's kind of what you would be looking for. You would be looking for when states either defer from another state, if you, were, if you could find a way to pair trade the states, or you would just find all states that diverge from the uh, housing price index that have a negative value. That's where you would buy your, your next house or something like that or invest in some property. That would be the idea anyway. So that is rolling uh, correlation and uh, as far as or really rolling statistics. Uh, so a bunch of rolling statistics here. But rolling correlation, at least in terms of the housing price index and housing market and stuff, obviously makes the most sense. Again, we already tested the correlation between every state and every state, and then we could also test the correlation between every state and the housing price index. Uh, and we found that, I mean, they're all bit, like the worst was actually still a positive 74%. So anytime you've got divergence to this degree, you buy whatever's, you know, diverged that much. I mean, it's pretty, I mean, at least in the last 40 years, that's true. You honor that and you will go for that. <laughs> it just makes sense. So anyway, uh, that's it for this tutorial. Questions, comments, whatever, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support subscriptions. Until next time.